It's a great day for real estate. I'm Rashana Levin, Realtor with KW United. So today is part two of the essential iPhone shortcuts for realtors, or if you're a business owner, or if you're someone that wants to utilize your phone more effectively and efficiently because we spend a lot of money on these phones, so they need to work a little bit better for us. So they're our personal assistant. So let's get into it. So I want to talk about a couple use cases for ideas that you can use shortcuts for. And the use cases that I have in this example, I actually have shortcuts already created that you'll be able to download if you request them. So you can create a shortcut to take photos. So I have one that will take a photo, like a selfie. You will decide whether you want to do a selfie or if you want to take a picture of wherever you are, like say if you're in an amusement park, if you're somewhere else that you want to capture where you are, it can do that. And also you can take a video automatically instead of having to actually go to the camera app, then go to the video. This will automatically prompt you. So it's like basically saving you a lot of steps to make your life easy. So next thing, add a meeting and text the attendee automatically. Uh, next, select contacts to text. Auto select contacts to call. So what? how I have this set up is it will randomly select five people to call from your phone and you can decide to call them or text them. So there are two different shortcut options. So there's a call one and there is a text one. And this probably doesn't make sense to you right now, but it will once you actually, once I go through it. Next option, you can create text message templates so you don't have to recreate them over and over again. Uh, you can airdrop your uh, contact card or share someone else's. So say for instance, if you're, if you need to share an allied resource with your client there in your phone, it's just easier to just, you know, send their contact information to them right then. Or you could text them their contact card. There's a lot of different things you can do. You can add a contact automatically to your phone and text them like, thank you for meeting them, so, so on and so forth. And also, if you miss the call, send them a message. So now, Let's dive into the shortcuts app. So first I'm going to build a shortcut from scratch. So the one that I'm actually going to build from scratch is a text message for a missed call. And then after that, I'll go through the other shortcuts that I created and show you how that works. All right, so first we want, this is the shortcuts app. So I'm gonna go back here because this is how it will look. I mean, if you don't have folders, so yours won't look like this. So the app shortcuts, it's gonna be based on what apps you actually have on your phone. So if you don't have Starbucks on your app on your phone, that's not gonna show on yours. So what we want to do, why don't I wanna to go to animations? So all short, cause I was just trying to show you the main screen. So we want to add the plus icon and you want to go ahead and rename that. You don't have to, but you should go ahead and rename this so you'll know what this is. So this is for missed call. And then now I'm into action. So what is it that I want this shortcut to do? So what I found out, you can't put the way the system works is based on what the actual item is in iPhone. So I tried to type text message, but that's not really what that is. It's actually messages. So if you type text message, it's not going to come up. You have to type messages because it's the messages app. And so you can click on messages and then... I already have this saved. So thank you for calling. How can I help you today? And you can automatically add a person if you want to. But for this example, I don't want to have somebody in the to field. 
I just want it to be blank because I'm going to copy and paste that missed call from my phone. And there's not a workaround. I tried to try to get an automation for, okay, if I get a missed call, it'll automatically do that. You would have to have a CRM or some other type of system to do so. So I haven't figured that out. If you know a way of how to do that, let me know. So now we want to click done because that's all we want to do with this. Actually, no, I want to add something else. Home screen. Whatever you do, you always want to go home after you're finished because I don't really still want to be in the shortcuts app. Like once I'm finished with it, I always want to go home. So make sure you add that. It's not a requirement, but it's recommended. So then you click done. So now what I want to do is I'm not finished. I want to add this to my home screen so it will, it will be there. So I don't have to go into shortcuts app to access this because I found that when I have everything in my shortcuts app, sometimes I would forget to go in the shortcuts app and then I was not using it. So that's the whole point. You're creating this to save you time. So what we want to do is tap on the three dots and we want to click on share. And now we want to go to home screen. And so now you can make changes to what this looks like. You can, in this option, you can actually choose a photo. Uh, you can take a photo of something right now if you want to. You can choose a file. I don't really know why you want to add a file there. That's odd, but anyway. So what we want to do is use what the template has. So I'm going to have this blue and then... Uh, I'll have the little guy like waving because I don't know, that's interesting. So now I want to add that. And so now because I told it to go to the home screen, this is what's on the home screen. So I want to, I want to move this. And so now let's test out what is it going to do? So I have a missed call. So this is what comes up. And so what I would do is I would copy and paste what that phone number was and put it here and then click send once you're done. And so that's that. So that shows you how to do that. So now let's go back into shortcuts and walk through how to set up some of these. So we're going to click on random person. So this is the one that will actually text five people from your phone. You don't have to select five people, but you're supposed to contact five people. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to find contacts. You want to click all. So I'll, I'll work, walk through it so you can kind of see. Find contacts. So see, this is find contacts. And then we want to click all. And then sort by. We want to make sure that's random. So that's just showing you how to do that. So I'm going to delete it. And so now you want to show. So what I want this to do is I want to see who it is that is going to message before I continue on. So you click show. And then this lets me know, well, what I'm actually doing. So texting, you can change that. So you can change what that means. So you can always change the variables here. So ask for text with what do you want to send? So what do you want to send these people? And so it's going to ask for input and then it's going to text those people. And also at the end, it's going to say, it's going to add notes to the contact once it's completed. So I will show you how that works really fast. I'm not going to text all these people. So these are all the people that came up. And then once you click done, it's going to ask you, what do you want to send? And then it's going to send those messages to those people. So we want to click cancel because we don't want to do that right now. So now I want to show you how to call five people 
randomly in your phone. So I'm going to click on the three dots. So anytime you need to edit something, you click on, you not necessarily click on the three dots, but kind of hold it in. And so it's the same thing. We want to find all contacts, make sure it's sorted by random. But also I want to add another feature here. So to show you kind of what you can do with this. So say, so if you have groups already saved in your phone, it won't work if you don't have groups. But say, okay, well, you're a team leader, for instance. Okay, you want to randomly select all your ALC members. And you want to, say you want to call them, call two of them in the list. So I don't have this set up. But let me see. So what it's going to do is it's going to select two people from your ALC. And it's going to show you who those are. Then once that happens, it's going to say, do you want to call them right now? Or you can say no, then it's going to take you back to your home screen. And so it's going to wait 15 seconds and then it's going to call the list. Then after that, it's going to put in the notes that you contacted them. So you can kind of keep track. You can use other systems, but I, I thought this was a, a neat feature where you could see the last time you actually spoke to the person. Um. And if you click no, it's going to take you back to the home screen. So I don't want to save that because that's not what this one is. Put that back to five, click done. So that's that one. So now let's click on photos. So I thought this was neat. So what you want to do is you want to choose from menu. So these are menu items. So if you select a menu item, then you can actually add other things to that. So the menu item. I say, I want to take a selfie. So what that's going to do is the camera is going to be facing you. It'll allow you to take three photos. And then after that is going to go to the home screen or scenery. That's things in front of you. So if you're in front of a monument, if you're in front of a store, you're eating something, you want to capture something else in front of you, that's what's going to happen. Then once you're finished with your three photos is going to go to home screen. So very easy. So click done. Then video is the same way. So talk, I call it talking video. So like say if you want to create a reel real fast for your social media, it'll automatically come up. Um, so you would select a talking photo for that. If you want to share something else, like say you want to share your food, then you would want to um, select the sharing video. And then after that, it's going to go to home screen. And once you complete each task, it's going to um, to work. So let me show you how that works. So sharing video. Well, of course, that's like a lot because I'm taking a video of the actual screen. So use video and then it's going to go back to home. So you see how that works. So now, now we're going to go to next appointment. So what next appointment is, is going to find, I find this useful, especially if you're working with buyers, if you're a buyer's agent or um, so the reason why you would use this is if you are with a client and you need to share the address with the next person. So you're with, you know, Jane Smith and, you know, they want to know what's the next property address to go to. Because I used to send my clients a list, but it's just in case if something changes, then, you know, I automatically know where we're going. So you want to find all the calendar events and don't feel overwhelmed with this because you can, I will help you with this. We can talk about how I can assist you with figuring out how to do this for yourself because basically whatever shortcut you create, you can share it. It's, it's not complicated. We'll just have to fine tune it for you for what you actually need for your use case scenario. So you want to find all the events 
And I want the events for just today. I don't need tomorrow. I don't need yesterday and all that. And then the events, it's counting the events in that day. So I said 10. I mean, you shouldn't have more than 10, but you can, you can change it. You can say, um, why well, I want only eight events or, but I want to keep it at 10. Um, cause it's say, for instance, if you were showing five properties to, you know, buyer one, and then you have another buyer, you're showing five properties. So that's 10 events in that one day. And so it's going to select the calendar events, and then it's going to come up and say what location, which you remember from the last video, I'll link that in below. It'll actually show you where we're going to next. And then the text is going to go to the recipients. So what I would suggest you do is create this shortcut for that particular client. So Jane Smith, so then you don't have to keep typing Jane Smith's name every time. It's there already because this is her showing appointment shortcut for her instead of having to do this automatically for her every time. Just a suggestion. Or you can type her name all the time anyway. It's, it's up to you. But that would save a lot of time. So next, what happens after the text message goes out? Then your maps opens up. So I like the map that's in Apple. I don't really care for Waze or any of that. I'm sure you probably could link those items um, to this. I just, I don't use it. So I don't know if you could do that. I'm sure you could or use um, um, Google Maps, but I just prefer Apple. That's just, it's just what I like, but it, I'm sure you can do that. So then I want to wait a couple seconds, like 60 seconds. I might lower this because I feel like it's too long. So then after that, it's going to prompt me, okay, showing time. Um, and depending on where you are in the country, you may have showing time, you may not. But this is the app that we use to actually show in appointments. It'll tell you how to access the properties. No, so whether it's, you know, the properties on Century Lock or what type of access, is there an alarm system, all that kind of stuff. So I want to know that before I go to the house. So this prompts me to open up the app to verify that. And then after that, it will open up Century Lock. And that's it for this. And so, which is, it's helpful instead of having to, okay, I've had to open, you think of like all these tasks here, it's probably like 10 things. So first you gotta, you would have to go to your, so first I would have to go to my calendar manually, pull up the actual address of the next property we're going to. Then I would actually have to copy and paste that, then open up my messages app, then send that to that person, then um, open up my driving app. Then I would have to go to showing time. Then I would have to go to Century Lock. So this saves so many steps. You just press it one time and boom, you're done. So just a suggestion. So moving right along. So happy birthday. This is pretty simple. Like the last, um, you know, the first uh, app that I created, you can create something, you know, you can create different ones. So this is just an idea. So you would just have that. Cause I mean, if you're typing the same thing, it doesn't make sense to keep retyping over and over again. And so airdrop. So what you would do for airdrop. So if it's for yourself, what I would recommend you do is create yourself as a contact in your phone. Because say you don't have any business cards and, you know, you still want that person to get your information. And then if you share the information, then they'll have you in your phone. Because this is what I don't, I like business cards, but I don't like them. The reason why I don't like them is because if a person loses your card, then they'll never be able to contact you again. What What are the odds of them actually seeing you again? Very rare. It's possible, but... That's first off. And then second thing is if they have your card, then you can't call them unless you get their information. So this, I created this as a habit of, you know, sharing my, my information with them, you know, cause a lot of times if I forget my card, you know, then you can't share it and it's not, you know, it's like, well, you know, I'm digital now. So, you know, I have cards, but you know, this makes it easy. 
So some people don't like airdrop, but I just wanted to show that this was an option. So what you would do is you would select yourself or whoever you want to share. Um, like say if you wanted to share like a loan officer or whatever. So you can select multiple people. That's what this plus icon is. But I don't want to do that right now. And then you find airdrop. So I show you airdrop and then contacts. So contacts, what is pulling is is pulling the previous contact. So then you click done and then it will airdrop to the person in the surrounding area. So next, uh, open house, that's pretty much the same thing. Open house request is pretty much the same thing as um, a text message. Uh, adding to the database. This is like my very, f this is like my favorite one of all time. So I'll tell you how this came about. And then I'll go into, you know, what, how to do it. So, you know, you meet somebody, you're in the store or you're at happy hour or you're at church or wherever you are and somebody wants your information. So what do you have to do? You have to open up your contacts. Then you have to click on the plus icon. Then you have to ask them you know, the spelling of their name, then you have to, you know, it's all these different steps. So what this does is it actually prompts you all the, like the essential information that you need to get from them. So what I want to know is like the first part. So when you add, so it's always, I always want to know their first name. So it's always going to prompt me for the first name. I don't necessarily need to know their last name right off. Um, cause some people won't, they don't kind of feel comfortable giving you their last name. Sometimes they will, but I always, I prompt the, the command and shortcut to ask for the first name. Like you have to put in the first name. You don't have to put in the last name. You can, but it's, I don't prompt you to do that in the example. And so I always want the phone number. So these are things that must happen for you to continue through the shortcut. So phone number you have to have, email, eh, I don't really request that right away. Um, I can get that from them later. Um, and when did I meet them? So it automatically defaults to the current date, which is today. That's when I met them. If it's not, you can change it. Um, and then where did we meet? I don't know an option for to select. I'm still kind of working on that to see if you, okay, I met them at the grocery store or I met them you know, at the gas station, I don't have like a select, like a drop down feature. I'll have to research that. That would be good because then you wouldn't have to type it in like a drop down or like, or other than you would type what it is. But I don't, I don't know if you can do that or not. I'll have to investigate. So then after that happens, it automatically sends them a text message. Well, it's not automatic, but the message app pops up because it's a security feature. I think in Apple, it won't message them right away unless you put this like on automatic. Um, if you're doing it manually, this is considered manually. If you do it automatic, I believe it would do it automatic, but you wouldn't do that automatic because you wouldn't have met them, if that makes sense. But anyway, automatically puts their first name and then it says, here's my contact to save. So then I'm finding my information again for them. So I only want one contact. So this is finding my information because it's only the first Roshana. So you could put find contacts where's where is your name, last name. So say, I mean, if it's, if you're John, for instance, if you have 20 Johns in your phone, then you would have to actually add another feet filter. So it's different ways that you can do it. If you have questions, let me know. And so the next thing, once you find your contact, then it will send your contact card to them, which is perfect. So once you click here, well, tap there, you would put your contact card. And then two is to the new contact. So you don't have to keep typing that because it's already there from previously. And then I have another uh, thing to add to my calendar. When did I meet them? I Because I want to add one more step. It's not, it's probably something you can actually add with Zapier or something you can do a connection. But just for this example, for other people that don't have that, then 
it automatically adds to your my Google calendar of when I met this person. And it reminds me that I need to add them to my CRM or KW command or whatever. So it does that at the end. So done. So now, let me see. So this is menus. So realtor life. So when you're selecting from a menu, these are basically apps that you would use. So I have maps in here. I have forewarn. I have century lock. I have KW command. I have realtor.com. This is the pro option. And so once you add an option to the, um, the menu, then you would have an option to actually link that to the actual app. So let me see, what could I add here? Um, this is not a realtor app, but it's, I'm just showing you how you can actually add the app. So I'm gonna add Starbucks. It's no plug to them, but I just wanna show you. So I added Starbucks there. And then you see it's here at the bottom here. And so now I want to open, well not open, <laughs> not open. So we want to open app and we want to tap on that and drag it to under Starbucks. And then we click on app, tap on app, I keep saying click on it. And then we link that to Starbucks. And so now we want to, whenever you want to run the actual app to see how it works, you want to click on this play icon at the bottom. So you see Starbucks is there. Doesn't have an icon next to it because I haven't added it. You can if you, if you want to. Um, so if I click there, then there we go. So, but I don't want Starbucks on here because that's not what this is. I just wanted to show you how you can add things to the list. And for a list, you can actually also add websites if you want to as well. It's a lot of different things that you can add. And I'll actually create a, a guide for um, downloading these um, because what you can do is you can share it. Like if you create something, you can share it. So whatever you want to do, you can edit, you can rename, you can see the details. Let's see what details are. So details, you can add this to the home screen. So say I want to add this to the home screen and that's added. You can, I don't know what show and share sheet is. You can add it to your Apple watch. If you, that option wouldn't come up if you don't have Apple watch. Um, I can pin this to the menu bar. I'm not sure what that does. Let's see. Let's learn. Um, I don't know what that does. Quick action. Yeah, I'm not sure what that does. Don't want to show you stuff that I don't know what it is. <laughs> so let me see. I think that's it for today's video. So I hope that this was helpful to you. If you would like to get a brainstorm about some of the shortcut ideas, if you have some ideas, if you have something that you think I should do a video on, let me know. Um, and we can collaborate on, um, on some different things. Oh, before I go, I just thought about something. So let's talk about automations real quick. So say for those five people that you want to text every day. So say, okay, time of day. I want to text those people at lunch every day. So then you don't have to think about it. So time of day, if you want to do this daily, weekly, monthly, so you can do it daily. So what this is run after confirmation or run immediately. So run after confirmation is you have to confirm this is what you want to do. Run immediately is going to run anyway. So let's say run after confirmation. So click next. And so since you already have it, you can create a automation from scratch or you can create an automation from something you already created. So I want to 
text five people every day at 12 o'clock. And so that's going to come up. So the, this is the thing though. Once you do automations, you can't go inside of the shortcut options, if that makes sense. Like all the steps in the shortcut, you can't go in it and you won't be able to know that it's running properly until the time you say. So right now is almost nine o'clock, you know, Eastern time is not going to run right now. So I can't see if it's going to run, but every day at 12 o'clock it will work. So that shows you that. And then also I want to show you these other galleries is other recommendations that you can actually use. You can, you know, you can create bolt tags. You can shorten URLs. It's a lot of different things that you can actually do. You can add different things to your morning routine. So what I have is I have something, um, I took it off for the video, but as soon as I get in my car, my Spotify opens automatically and goes to the playlist I want to listen to when I'm driving based on what, what that is for that day. So you can make your life easier instead of having to do this, 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 and this, you know, it makes it make your phone, your assistant, because we are spending a lot of money on these devices and they can do a lot of stuff. Make it a great day and thank you for watching.